Hello crafty friends, welcome to another in our ink pad series of videos. In the last five videos we've looked at distress oxides and all the techniques you can do with them. Today we're going to look at Catherine Polar inks as an example of dye based inks. So to start I'll give you a bit of an overview and a rundown and then we'll make a card together. And along the way, I'll tell you how they compare to Distress Oxides and what they're good for. So, as I said, these inks are dye-based. Distress Oxides are dye and pigment-based, but these are just dye-based. They are water-based as well, so they're water-reactive, which makes them easy to clean up and it allows you to do some of those kind of Distress Oxide techniques like lifting colour as well. The big difference between these and Distress Oxides is that Distress Oxides are opaque, so they're not see-through, so when you put one on top of the other, the top one will cover the bottom one. These are translucent, they're see-through, so when you put one on top of the other, you can see through the top one to the bottom one below and you get a blend of the colours where they overlap. They're not chalky, like the Distress Oxides can be, but they don't show up on dark paper. The chalkiness of the Distress Oxides allows them to show up on black paper, but these don't have any of that property, so if you put them on black paper, you won't see them. Because they're dye-based, they soak into the paper quite quickly and they will stain the paper, which does make them harder to blend and harder to lift, but not impossible. The Catherine Pool inks come in two sets. There is a party collection, which are lots of bright colours, and a spa collection, which are more muted. Helpfully, on the website, there is a downloadable PDF of the Catherine Pooler inks colour wheel. So these are the party collection. These are the bright ones. If I flip over, you can see that these ones, the spa collections, are more muted. I've got a, a collection of both of them. I haven't got all of them, but I've got quite a few now. I started collecting them late last year, 2023, and have gradually built up my collection over time. So what can you do with these inks? Well, they're good for blending, for lifting, swiping, smushing, splattering, stenciling, stamping. You can heat emboss with them, you can dry emboss with them, you can do gel printing, water colouring, spritz and drip. You can mix them with mediums to colour the mediums and you can use them on glossy photo paper. So all the techniques that we've done in this series with Distress Oxides you can also do with dye inks such as the Catherine Pooler inks. There are lots of dye inks on the market, so if you haven't got these or the Distress Oxides, then just play with the techniques that you've seen in this series and see what you can do with the inks that you've got. I'm sure you'll be able to do pretty much everything with your inks. One thing to note with the Catherine Polar ink pads is they do need re-inking quite often. With my Distress Oxides, I have re-inked them once in the six years. I've had some of my older ones. As I say, I've had these since, I think Christmas I got my first ones. It might have been my birthday in October, but so a matter of months really. And I've already had to re-ink some of them. That's not a bad thing. They're very juicy ink pads. They lay down a lot of colour. I have the mini ink pads. You can get oval ones which are a lot bigger, but they do need re-inking more often. So I think as I buy more of these inks, I will always buy the re-inker that goes with them. So this is one I made by swiping the ink pad across. You do need to be careful with these ink pads. These are foam ink pads, they're quite delicate. So if you are gonna do director paper swiping, be careful, don't poke them with anything because otherwise it will damage your ink pad. On this one, I swiped, but I overlapped the ink pads. So this is a swipe of be mine and this is a swipe of cummerbund and where the cummerbund went over the be mine you get a completely different colour because as I say they're translucent so you can see through the cummerbund to the pink below and combine to the two colours make a new colour and that's not something that happens with distress oxides because if I was to swipe with pink and let it dry and then swipe with blue and let it dry the blue would cover the pink and you wouldn't see a colour through it. 
This is a panel I did with blending. I blended on some frosted, then I used a stencil and blended on some B mine. And you can see how the B mine is a different color because it's over the frosted. And this was cummerbund again, and you can see how the cummerbund is a different shade because it's over the frosted. It does take a little bit longer to build up color when blending with Catherine Pula inks or any dye inks because as I say they stain the paper they get sucked in but if you use a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper or a really good quality smooth cardstock then the blending is a lot easier sometimes they can look a bit blotchy but they do actually smooth out really well this is one I did on glossy photo paper I just smushed the colors on and when it comes to stamping, they're pretty good with most stamps. I've used them on rubber stamps, photopolymer stamps and silicon stamps. And they stamp beautifully with all of them. With the silicone stamps, you do have to maybe stamp a few times to get a nice smooth finish. But that's not the ink. That's the silicone stamps. Silicon is naturally water repellent. So any water based ink is going to bead up on a silicone stamp. Uh, distress oxides do the same thing. But we're going to talk tomorrow about Ranger Archival inks, which are oil based and they're great for using on silicone stamps. Right, so let's make a card with these. I'll do a few different techniques just so you can see them. So I have used these balloon dies to cut a stencil out of a bit of plastic packaging that I had floating around my desk. I think this is off a stamp set. And I'm going to blend some balloon shapes onto this piece of smooth mixed media paper. I'll just use some sticky notes to hold that down where it needs holding down. And we'll start with Be Mine, which is a red violet. Can't remember if I said, but I do have a separate set of brushes for my Catherine Pooler inks because I don't want to contaminate the ink pads with pigment from my Distress Oxides. I also have a separate set of sponge finger daubers. So there we go, we've got a Be Mine balloon there. It's blended nicely. Now we'll go for some Hummerbund in the smaller size. Oops, I went over the edge there. We'll fix that later with something. Now, if that was a Distress Oxide that I was using, I'd be able to cover it up with a layer of Distress Oxide, either in that colour or a different colour. But these are translucent, so I can't do that. So this is Cummerbund. I'm just tapping my blender on there. And as you can see, I'm getting a different colour there where the two colours are overlapping. There's nothing to say that you can't use Distress Oxides and dye inks on the same card. So if I did want to cover that up with a blended ink, I could bring in a Distress Oxide to cover that up. So there we have our two balloons. I'm going to go for the smallest one now and use Pixie Dust. And again, you can see... We've got a different colour there where the two inks overlap. I'm going to add another big one here and I'm going to use Pixie Dust again, just so you can see in this area here where the three colours overlap. So there we've got Pixie Dust and Be Mine overlapping, Pixie Dust and Cummerbund overlapping, and then all three overlapping in that area. It's like a Venn diagram. Now to show you a bit of stamping, I've got some photopolymer balloon stamps here. And we'll stamp the top one in pixie dust. With these, you really don't have to press hard to get the ink on the stamp. It's got a really nice impression there first time because it's a photopolymer stamp. Now I'm going to do a B mine. Again, that's a nice stamped image, but I think it's ever so slightly blotchy. It's probably not as much ink on this ink pad. So we'll do a second go. Dye inks can stain your stamp, so this is already stained pink because of that pink ink, but that won't damage the stamp in any way and it won't come off on future projects, so don't worry about that. Come a bunch there, I think. So what I'm going to do now is create a smushed background on glossy photo paper 
and then I'm going to die cut some balloons from that. So I've smushed a bit of pixie dust and bee mine onto my mat, squirted on some water to turn it into a, a movable paint and I've got some glossy photo paper here which I'm just going to press down into that. It's got a lovely smooth smushed background there. I'll just wipe that up and bring in cummerbund. So we've got all three colours on there and I shall dry that carefully with my hairdryer so as not to upset the glossy finish. So I'm going to cut some balloons out of this, just the smaller of the two, because I think if I cut a big one, it will cover up too much of my stamping and blending. So there's my balloons. They don't stand out particularly well on there because they're almost paler than the background. Take a finger dauber with a little bit of ink on and just go around the edge to define the edge a bit. See, that stands out a bit better. I think we'll just use Bee Mine on all of them. And before we stick them down, I've just popped a little slip knot in this piece of gold thread and tightened it around the bottom of the balloon and secured the other end with a bit of washi tape. So now these balloons will have some gold string on them. Before I stick my balloons on, I want to add some spattering to give the card a bit more energy and vibrancy. So I've smushed some pixie dust there and added some Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder in White Pearl Mixer. So this should make the pixie powder splatters shimmery. So I've just added some water. You can see how it's, it's lightened. And I'm just going to gently spatter on a few Spatters here and there. You could do all three colours. So I've put extra spatters there so you can't really tell that I made a mistake. There's always a way to cover things up or incorporate so called mistakes into your design. So we're going a bit over the top on the spatters now, but never mind. I don't want to waste this, so I've got some, I think that's smooth white cardstock maybe bristol paper there just a scrap and i'm going to pick up that shimmery pixie powder and pop that in my box of backgrounds and bits for later i could also spatter a few bits of water on which will lift some of the color from the blended and stamped balloons just to show you that that's possible and I shall roll this kitchen paper over, which will pick up some of the purple shimmery dots, lighten them slightly and pick up some colour where the water splats were. So you can see that you can lift colour with the Catherine Puller inks too. Now I'm going to dry that a bit. Hopefully you can see that there's some shimmer on there now. Now for my glossy balloons, I'm going to pop these up on foam tape. Right, I've taken the release paper off of those, so I think I'll put the big one here in the middle. And then maybe this one here, and that one there, I think. And I've got this little bow die, I'm going to cut a bow out of the leftover bit of this glossy paper. So I've got my strings here and I've put a mini glue dot here and I'm going to put my strings on this mini glue dot so they stay put. And then I've got here the little bow that I cut. I'm going to dip that in some high tack glue and stick it there. And now I'm going to trim my threads about here. So unfortunately things have got a little bit messy because I got sticky fingerprints down here. Then I tried to erase the sticky fingerprints before they were fully dry, which meant that I made a mess. So we've got a bigger bow and I'll move that down there to cover it up. It's not perfect, 
but I think you get the picture. Hopefully you get the picture. As a sentiment, I've got this congratulations stamped in black and white, which should pop quite nicely on there. And it sits well on the big balloon. I like that. Don't think it's going to need anything under the ends. I think that's fine. And as a finishing touch, to bring a bit more gold in, we'll add some gold Nouveau drops here and there. And this drags the eye away from this mess up here. All I need to do now is wait for my Nouveau drops to set and then I can mount this on a 5 by 7 inch card blank. I hope you've enjoyed this look at dye inks and Catherine Pooler inks in particular. Don't forget that you can do all these techniques with most water-based dye inks. I say most because I've not tried them all, so I can't guarantee all, but I don't see why not. Do come back tomorrow for the next video in the series. We'll look at Ranger Archival inks, which are dye-based, oil-based inks. And I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.